Hi folks, welcome to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. You know, in 1970, when Richard Nixon, our illustrious president, decided to form the Drug Enforcement Agency, I don't think he quite understood what he was doing, as is there are a lot of things about his presidency that we don't understand. I think there were things that, at times, that he was really overstepping his bounds, and this certainly was one of those times. Uh, un the Controlled Substance Act itself, the very fact that you could come up with a set of laws that regulated what a person, an individual, chooses to put into their own body for whatever reason, is really stepping out there. And then to form a drug enforcement agency as a police force to enforce this is really just over the top. But let's, uh, let's put all of that aside because we can sit here and talk all day long about the trillions of dollars that have been spent since 1970 to wage this war on drugs, and, and most of it's a war on marijuana in this country. Uh, we we see the violence going on down in the across the border there in Mexico, where up to 50,000 lives have been lost just in recent years, just from cartel violence and people trying to muscle in on their territory and who's going to sell what marijuana where in the country of the United States and. And this, this is just sort of unbelievable in modern day times and standards when you, when you look at the civility of people and just human beings like you and I, whether you, whether you smoke cannabis or not, whether you're aware of the beneficial aspects of it or not, whether you disagree or agree with the drug war or not, has nothing to do with the issue of the human side and the human element. And in that human element, it's kind of like honesty. It's like when you're in a relationship with a woman and you build a level of trust with that woman that you're very close to and you do, there are things you share with her that you wouldn't share with anyone else. And it's because you've, you have this level of trust and honesty that you've built up with it. And if that's betrayed, then you can see how devastating it is to, to see that your honesty and trust and all that's betrayed. Well, this drug war is kind of like that in a strange sense of ways. It's, uh, it's, it's like people who they decide that they want to use the cannabis herb for whatever reason, for medicinal purposes, for recreational purposes, whether they want to use it for the medicinal aspects of uh, t as a tonic, a tincture, or f whatever. I mean, it's, it's their right, their individual right. And what human side of us is going to allow the bloodshed and violence to control a substance that pretty much is up to the individual to put inside his or her body. Why would we go to these extremes? Why would we spend the kind of money that we spend with this ruth a gang that's just as ruthless as the cartel in my mind is this drug enforcement agency, how they operate? And then you, you know, the government itself for years, decades, would not put out any money to do any research on cannabis. They had one at the uh, University of Mississippi, they have the uh, marijuana farm over there. This was the only, the only facility in the country that the government funded to do anything with cannabis. And most of that was just to supply a little bit of medical marijuana to a handful of, of a very few people. Most of it was unknown. I mean, we knew about it back in the 70s because we thought, man, what a, what a cool job that would be to go and work at the, at the uh, pot farm for the government. But that's not really the, you know, back then it was sort of a novel, novice idea, but today it's become something very serious. And with this drug war and this drug enforcement agency and the level of arrests that are going on just for cannabis, I mean, there are law enforcement bodies, state to state, county to county, parish to parish, on local levels all the way up to the federal level. This is their number one priority. We, we, we honestly, we spend more money in this country going after people who have chosen to use a safe herb as opposed to the legal, dangerous alcohol, cigarette, prescription drug combinations that are available out there that they could use and not go to jail. People actually risk getting arrested because they want to use this, this safe herb, this one that doesn't cause death this one that doesn't send them to the hospital, this one that doesn't make them sick, this one that actually makes them well when they are sick. And if nothing else, if it doesn't cure what's ailing them, it makes them feel better about it, where they don't think about it as much. Why is that wrong? 
And most of the people who use the substance for whatever reason, recreational, medicinal, whatever, they're doing in the privacy of their own space. They're not coming into your home. They're not coming into the, your child's school, into their classroom, and blowing marijuana smoke in their face and saying, hey kids, here, this is what you've got to do. That's never happened. That never would happen. People are using this in the privacy of their own space. They're ex exercising their own constitutional right of individual choice. I don't know about you, but I don't want the choices that are legal there to put into my body. I, I don't want to take any prescription drugs for anything. The side effects on all of those are just are unbelievable that anybody would even put that in their mouth. Alcohol, there's been plenty of people die from that. Plenty of people die from cigarettes. What's the end result there if you use those substances? A coffin, a body bag, six feet under. I don't want that. I want to be able to use a substance that's safe. One that I've used for over 42 years now. One that has never sent me to the doctor. One that has never sent me to the hospital. One that has never killed anybody I know that smoked it. And I, everybody used to smoke it. That I knew, everybody. I, I, we didn't know anybody that didn't smoke it. We couldn't even figure out why it was Ill, illegal. How could they have something illegal that everybody was smoking? We never could understand that. Everybody we knew smoked cannabis back in the seven, early 70s and late 60s. But when we form this drug enforcement agency, we start brainwashing people, making up lies and telling them that, that it's killing people, telling them that babies are dying from it, telling them that the kids aren't finishing school because of it, telling them that people are getting in cars and going down the highway and killing people because they're using marijuana. We start pouring it on real thick. And in the 60s and 70s and 80s, people were very vulnerable to propaganda, very vulnerable to this brain level of brainwashing. And that's what it was. We just have decade upon decade upon decade of layers brainwashed into these people. And it's awful thick. And it takes a while to peel back that to where you can get common sense and really factual knowledge to these people to make them understand that they have been lied to. They have been lied to. It's that plain and simple. They were lied to. None of the statistics, none of the research done by private universities, none done by private individuals that funded any of the research, none of these have shown anything that the, that the government has produced. Nothing, absolutely nothing. So this is wrong. It's bogus. We have innocent people dying. Even if you use the cannabis herb or not, this has nothing to do to it. L bring out your human side. Bring out that part of you that knows right from wrong. Bring out that honest core value that you have, that you learned when you were a child, when you learned right from wrong from your parents and stuff. Bring that out. Get, get past all of this propaganda. Use common sense. If statistics show that, that this thing is safe, guess what? It is. And statistics show that alcohol and cigarettes are dangerous and prescription drugs are dangerous. Guess why? They are dangerous. Statistics, they don't lie. Thank you for spending time in the Canvas Corner.